Today we're going to be talking about opportunity costs in the Pokemon Investing 2022. That's right, we're going to take a look at some topic that's been pushed around a little bit. Someone with a counter, the discussion that was in the live chat feature while it was going on, and really clarify what you're actually looking at. I think a lot of people don't quite understand what opportunity cost is. I think it was well described in some form inside of the actual live stream that was put on and as normal i'm not going to put drop names i just don't do that on this channel in a negative way i think that there's a learning opportunity here we can actually go through and explain even in pokemon terms what the opportunity costs are of certain products when it comes down to investment so when we actually break down, we'll go back to the whiteboard. You can see I've already got it set up with two familiar sets with Evolving Skies, Chilling Rain, and just using a dollar bill. What could you have seen as opportunity costs between those three items? So, guys, if you're new here, hit that subscribe, hit that notify, and as always, hit that like button. I'm just going to throw up a quick reminder that we do have the giveaway coming, and I want to be sure that everybody has the opportunities to remember that. So if you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe so you can get in on the information that's going on. And then also, as in the last video, I'll link it up here next to me. We are doing a little bit of a game or an investment strategy in 2023 that we're going to be starting how you want to start and we'll be ending how you want to end and we'll see what we can do with those parameters so once again check out that video afterwards i'll put it at the end of this one so you guys can check that one out and definitely have an opportunity to hit the community tab and be sure that you're involved in that so other than that we're going to go ahead and switch back to the screen behind me and we're going to go over some numbers here with you guys Today, we're going to be talking about opportunity costs here at the whiteboard. That's right. It's very easy to write this out. Sometimes the visual aspect of it is the important thing so you can visualize what's actually happening and what is actually opportunity cost in the Pokemon TCG. So I've heard people say time is the opportunity cost. That's not an opportunity cost. We can sit here and look at what was said about purchasing in at the right time, and that's really not an opportunity cost. That's just your buy-in time frame. Opportunity has nothing to do with time. It has nothing to do with buying in. That opportunity cost is something completely different. And when I talk about opportunity cost, it comes down to when you purchase an item, what did the alternate item do? Is there an opportunity gain or an opportunity cost? And today we're going to break that down a little bit with these three items. And we've got the US dollar. We're going to go with $100, leaving it in your checking account. You buy an $80 booster box of Chilling Rain or you buy a $100 box of Evolving Skies. This was back in December 1st of 2021, and that's actually what they were. $79.95, we had $99 to $103, depending on shipping and all that, so I just went with an easy $100. And, of course, a $100 bill is a $100 bill. It doesn't make a difference where you're at, right? So it is what it is. It's always a $100 bill. So today we're going to be talking about the opportunity costs and the effects of things that could go on when you're actually looking at this. So first thing we're going to talk about is, of course, chilling rain. Now, people were talking about Chilling Rain, and the argument was in the live is they were going back and forth about how Chilling Rain has made no money. See, there's your opportunity cost, blah, blah, blah. At $80, you could have bought Chilling Rain a year ago, almost a year ago exactly, and you bought it for $80. And today, one year later, at December 1st of 2022, you've gotten it to 108. So, you have gained $28 on the value of that item. So, we'll put it in there. Got $28, right? I made $28 by just taking this, putting it on my shelf in the corner, and forgetting about it. Evolving Skies. And Evolving Skies has been a monster when it comes down to Pokemon investing. If we go here, bought it at $100 at the very beginning of December last year. Today, it is $260. You have gained $160 of value inside of that item just sitting on your shelf. What has your US dollar done? $100. <laughs> it really hasn't changed, right? But there's going to be a reason that we're going to bring that up. So if we go ahead and we talk about now, you're looking at these gains through time. This is your opportunity cost. Going from here to here is going to be your opportunity cost. Your opportunity cost is the difference between the item you picked. So if you picked Chilling Rain instead of Evolving Skies, thinking that you were going to have a banger set, you had a $28 gain. They had $160 gain for the individuals that picked Evolving Skies. If you look at that for your price difference, you have $132 difference. Your opportunity cost was $132. Now, we could go ahead and erase that number off of existence because 
course, we did have inflation, and that's where I have the U.S. dollar. So some people would say you've got inflation of these products also. So if you look at this, you actually did not make $28 because of the last year. You are now making $20 on inflation on the sales of that item. We can go to Evolving Skies, and if you go to Evolving Skies and you look at the inflationary rate of this item, you're going to be looking at losing another $21 off of this. So you're actually going to be $139. So after inflation, the value of that is $139. U.S. dollar. Now, everybody thinks a dollar is a dollar. It's face value. But when we talk about inflationary rates, $100 a year ago would have bought you more than a $100 bill does today. Today's equivalent is $92. That's right. You lost $8 for every $100 that you had in a savings account in the last year or even a checking account in the last year. It has lost you money. This is an important factor, and this is where we sit there and talk about it. So still, we go back and look at it. You still have what? A hundred. Oh, if I could do math. $119. So you got $119 in opportunity costs. So if you would have bought Chilling Rain a year ago, at the same point, you, you did this all at the exact same point in time, you would ha have lost $119 in opportunity costs between Chilling Rain and Evolving Skies. Now, this is where it gets really interesting and can get really confusing really quickly. If you were to go ahead now, and let's say you were to buy Evolving Skies right there, and chilling rain right there. Do we think, and this is where we look at expected value of a product, do you honestly think at this point in time, Evolving Skies is going to cross above that $260 mark? You might see 270 maybe 280 That'd be pushing it. I don't think we'll see $3 booster, $300 booster boxes here in 2023, especially if it gets a reprint. So this is where I would typically say, okay, I'm looking at opportunity costs again on these products. I have one here. I have six cases. I'm going to sell four of these cases. I'm going to take the equivalent and buy four cases of Chilling Rain. Why am I going to do that? Because probably those are going to flip. Your opportunity is probably more here than it is here now. Because this is going to stagnate or potentially drop at this point. You might lose money. It might go backwards. And that's the funny thing is about opportunity costs. Every year that it's out there, the opportunity costs can change. U.S. dollar could change, right? We could continue in an inflation market. We could go into a deflation market, and that $92 could become 108 We don't know. We can't tell these predictions. But over time, this is what your opportunity cost actually is. And that's why I like to sit here and discuss these things is, is that this is opportunity cost, whether you buy Silver Tempest or Lost Origin, Astro Radiance, Brilliant Stars, any of them. They all have a opportunity cost to each other, depending on how you do things. You want to try and mitigate that opportunity cost as much as possible. Now, I know a lot of people have been saying Chilling Rain is a great thing. And I, I agree. I've been watching Chilling Rain as a potential. I'm seeing some potential maybe purchasing that. If we don't get reprints of Evolving Skies, and even if we do, I want to be selling this now. I'm starting to list this. I'm trying to make my money. And I'm probably going to buy Chilling Rain because the chances of a Chilling Rain reprint are probably slim to none. We're probably never going to see a reprint of Chilling Rain going into Scarlet and Violet at this point. The set just has not hit enough expectations for Pokemon to be looking at it. Evolving Skies could. I think we might be getting one here in December from what I'm hearing from multiple sources now is that we might be seeing an Evolving Skies reprint coming in December. We don't know the size. Could be big, could be small. It, it just depends on who you talk to. Um, it might be more broad. It might be a European and Australian one. But regardless, sounds like we're having a reprint of Evolving Skies coming up here shortly which means that $260 booster box is probably going to drop. And then we got to wait for it to drop and come back up in order to retain back that opportunity cost, meaning your opportunity cost is going to dry, dry up. Should you jump ship now and skip? Maybe. Maybe keep two back. Let them ride. See where they are in five years if you want to do long-term investment. If you're looking at the opportunities now, you can definitely catch it now. Now, my question is, is do you think at some point in time these two are going to equal out to each other? No. I think Evolving Skies is always going to be running. So when you sit there and talk to people and say, yeah, you could buy any of these booster boxes, sit on it for 10 years, and you'll do fantastic. They're all going to go up in price. Yeah, everything's going to go up in price. Just naturally, things are going to go up in price. They're going to become less available, less, 
less scarce, and there's going to be more of them around. So thus, the price is going to naturally go up. But you need to make smart choices by looking at the possible extended values of these things. What are we looking at? Expected values of these products. What's your entry point of these products? And then your opportunity cost of each one of these products. Those are very important aspects when you're looking at the investment of products. So once again, Evolving Skies definitely would have been the better bet back in there. Today, I think Chilling Rain, if you were just picking these two, and I'm only going by these two because they're on the board. You could sit here and do this program and figure everything out for every one of them. Chilling Rain may still not be at the right point to be the what you should be jumping into and, and putting on a shelf. Why put money on a shelf? We talk about getting money to work for you. That, my friends, is not working for you. Because after you do all of your listing, you go through, you pay for the shipping materials, the shipping label. You're already down $10. So there's $10. Plus, you had to pay 15% on, of course, that. You're already negative $5. So you're still negative $5 on chilling rain. So once again, one of those things you need to realize on the aspect of things is that we are still negative on chilling rain. Even after one year of time, evolving sky is a completely different story. Even if you subtract that, you're still making about $80 to $90 a box. So once again, that's what we're talking about when you're looking at opportunity costs or opportunity gain. So evolving skies to chilling rain, you have an opportunity gain. From chilling rain to evolving skies, you got an opportunity cost. And that's exactly what we want to see, is we want to see that opportunity gain. You want to try and pick the best item you can for your investment. That is what is actually an opportunity cost. I wanted to break this down because, like I said, I've been seeing a lot of off-the-wall ideas when it comes down to these products and what opportunity cost is, what actual opportunity is buying in, buying it, you know, when you purchase, when you don't, those things are up. No, that's not opportunity cost. That's just your buy-in point. Your buy-in point can be anywhere on the spectrum and you could still get an opportunity cost versus another product in the similar field of investment. So you can do that with PSA cards. You can do that with singles. You can do that with sealed product and you can do that with even going outside of the TCGs for in magic and all the other places too. They all have this available to yourself. If you look at the data from one year to another, it's constantly fluxing. It's constantly changing. And yes, if you were to start here and buy an evolving skies booster box at 260 and a chilling rain box at 108, your opportunity cost is probably going to be on the evolving skies. Cause if we get a reprint, it's going to go down. If we go long-term, do you think that that box is going in the next year is going to have more growth than a chilling rain booster box with the cost right now, especially if Scarlet and Violet kind of flops on the first set first, let's say base sets a little bit slow. Even the first expansions a little bit slow. Chilling rain might be your winner. So once again, guys, I just wanted to point that out to you. I just wanted to have this discussion because I'm seeing a lot of weird comments and a lot of weird videos on what opportunity cost is. And I haven't seen one that's actually right and actually pinned down what the opportunity cost is. So if you were to bought chilling rain, your opportunity cost was all the potential money that you lost compared to the same, a similar product in the same field. So a booster box to a booster box. In Evolving Skies, the Chilling Rain, you've lost $119 to an Evolving Skies booster box. That was your opportunity cost of that box. If you had chosen this, you would have made that $119. To be honest with you, there's probably no booster box right now in the Sword and Shield block that you can do that with. So this is going to be your only top dog right now of Sword and Shield. Could that change? Absolutely. It always fluxes. It always changes. Keep in mind, you always have to be looking at those numbers. So if this was helpful for you guys, and this guy Hanks, makes a little bit more sense than what you've been hearing on some of the other videos, be sure you hit that subscribe. Be sure you hit that like button if you made it this far in the video. And be sure you hit that notify to, so you know when we do new things and keep up to date with these kind of videos. If you do like this kind of content, as always, check out these two videos over here. I'll put them up for you afterwards, just as I always do. And we will see you next time here on Northwoods TCG.